Hi everybody, this is Montana at Howerton Performance. Um, I get a lot of questions on uh, how the actual kits need to be wired in, how battery cables need to be wired, all of that good stuff. So we have actually made some diagrams on our website um, that show all of this. Um, and, and we're going to talk about a little bit of it today. Um, we're mainly going to be talking about the battery cables, how battery cables need to be wired and kill switches. Okay, um, so we're actually going to kind of look over that. Um, and this is mainly what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and, and basically there are some safety features that need to be included if you're going to be running a kill switch and a battery relocation. Um, and that those, those things are, are very important um, in, in order to make sure that your car doesn't, you know, burst into a ball of flames or, um, you know, to make sure that if the, the track crew kills your kill switch, it will actually kill the motor and make sure that the motor does not stay running. Okay. Um, so basically, getting into this, uh, the, the proper battery cable routing, and, and this can be done a couple different ways, uh, you know, some slight variations, but in general, the battery cable routing needs to be done like this, okay? Um, and basically, um, so from your battery, battery positive, you're going to come to your kill switch. Then from your kill switch, you're going to go to the rest of the vehicle, okay? Um, except for we are going to be ignoring the alternator for right at the moment, okay? Um, later on in the video, I'm going to show you uh, the actual, our actual drag truck and how we have it wired. And, and that may make a little bit more sense to you. But from the vehicle side of the kill switch, okay, this is what we are going to call the vehicle side, okay? And this is the battery side. Okay. Hope everybody can see that. Battery side, vehicle side. And excuse my writing. Um, the vehicle side, we are going to go to our wiring kit, our relay board, switch panel, whatever you have. Okay. Even if this isn't a kit of ours, you know, this is going to be going to power all of your stuff. It's going to be powering your ignition box, your fuel pump, water pump, um, lights, fans, whatever, okay? Um, this is just basically going to be powering the entire vehicle, okay? And depending on the length of the run, this does not have to be one gauge, um, but you can go larger, you can't really go smaller. So, um, next, you're going to want to power the starter, okay? Now, this can be done slightly different. This is one of the variations that can be done slightly different. This could actually be connected directly to the battery, okay? Um, and, and I'm going to show that a little bit later on. But there are some safety features that we need to take into account to do that, okay? The way that our drag truck is ran, um, the starter is connected directly to the battery. And then from there, um, it goes to the alternator and we don't have this wire right here. Okay. So it goes directly to the battery and then to the alternator. Now, uh, like I said, some safety features that need to be taken into account. Okay. Um, one safety feature that a lot of people leave out is the alternator needs to go directly to the battery side of the kill switch. Okay. Um, it, it can either go directly to the battery or the battery side of the kill switch, okay? Um, if, you, if you happen to connect it right here on the vehicle side of the kill switch, okay? If you connect it like this, when the track crew or you hit your kill switch, your motor is going to stay running, okay? This is another power source, okay? So you've killed your battery, you hit your kill switch, you've killed your battery, right? Right here, you've disconnected it. However, 
This is another power source. Your motor is still spinning this alternator and it is creating 13.8 volts, which it goes to the vehicle side. From the vehicle side, it is going to all of your components. So if you wire it like this, now there are some ECUs and stuff out there that can uh, navigate around this, but for the most part, if you wire it like this, when the track crew kills your vehicle or kills your kill switch, your motor is going to stay running because your alternator is still spinning. It's still creating 13.8 volts and it is thus powering all of your components, okay? So this needs to go to the battery side somewhere over here of the kill switch, okay? So when, when the track crew hits your kill switch, it disconnects right here. There's a gap right here, okay? Your alternator is spinning, creating 13.8 volts, comes over here, goes up here, and then it has nowhere to go. So it actually disconnects from the rest of your vehicle and it will actually kill the motor, okay? So that is very important um, that the alternator be on the battery side of the kill switch. Um, some further uh, safety precautions that we need to take into account. We need to have some fuses here, okay? Because let's say we get a cut in the battery cable right here, okay? There's a cut in the battery cable, you know, because of vibrations and whatnot, and this starts shorting out. Well, now we have a direct short from the battery. You know, it's coming from the battery over to here and directly shorting out. So we need to have some mega fuses right here, okay? Um, a and L or mega fuse, okay? <clears throat> and we will talk about those fuse sizes here in just a minute. We need to have one here and we need to have one, you know, on the, uh, somewhere over in here, okay? We need to have two of these and that will prevent and of course, the closer to the battery you can get, the better. Um, but that will prevent you from burning your car down. You know, if you get a short here, um, instead of melting this whole cable and, you know, burning, you know, it, it catching on fire, you know, whatever, burning your car down, it will blow this fuse, okay? And then you can check and see what's going on. Same thing on this side, okay? We need to have some kind of a fuse right here that will blow if, you know, anything over in here shorts out against the vehicle, okay? Um, and, and that's the two major safety features that we need to include when we are doing battery uh, kill switches and um, battery relocations, okay? Uh, so um, let's take a look at some actual, um, you know, in life, Okay, so this is how we actually have our drag truck wired up. And, you know, this is the off season, so you just kind of have to ignore some of the boxes and whatnot. But as you can see, we have some A&L um, mega fuses here. Um, these are mega sized, A&L sized, you know, however you want to look at it. Um, negative side of the battery is disconnected. So how we have this wired, we have a one gauge cable coming down here and then from here we have a jumper I think I'm going to replace this with a bar you know a, a copper bar anyways we have a jumper over here so we have battery power coming to these two terminals right here now we have these fused okay I don't think you're gonna be able to see the fuse sizes we have a 350 amp fuse here. This is for our starter and our alternator, okay? So this, this cable goes to the starter and then it goes to the alternator. So hopefully um, in the event of we have a short somewhere along that path, this will blow instead of uh, burning the truck down, okay? And then we have a... Um, 120 amp fuse right here. 
This goes over to our kill switch. From here, it powers uh, our relay board um, or relay box. So once again, if anything uh, um, shorts out from here to the relay box, hopefully this will blow instead of burning the truck down, okay? Now, um, th this applies no matter if you're using a remote battery disconnect, um, you know, any other kind of battery disconnect, whatever. This still applies. You really need to have uh, some A and L or Mega fuses here. Now, the difference between the A and L and the Megas, they're the, physically the same size, um, but the A and L has higher ratings, so you can go up to I, I think it's like 800 amps. Um, and the ANL is faster reacting. So um, the Mega is a slightly slower blowing fuse. This is a faster blowing fuse, the ANLs. We have a 350 amp fuse here. Um, we haven't actually tested it, but that should be enough. Um, this is a, a kind of a, a, a medium mild compression small block Chevy. Um, that should be plenty. Um, we're probably looking at like 200 amps cranking um if you have a you know a super high compression big block chevy running a stock starter it may pull 500 amps um if, if you have a good starter good aftermarket starter um then then it's probably going to pull two to three hundred amps so 350 should be good um for the rest of the vehicle uh 120 should be good i mean you know um if you're running a, a 120 amp alternator and your battery's staying charged, then you're most likely staying under 120 amps. So you're good there. You, you may have to go up to 150 if this does blow, but I would test all of that stuff out before you get to the track. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically, that's basically how you need to make sure that your vehicle is wired um, for safety reasons. You know, so if we kill this disconnect, you know, the alternator is on the battery side of the disconnect. So it is going to kill the motor. The motor is not going to stay running. It's going to kill the motor. Um, if the alternator was on the vehicle side of the disconnect, your motor is going to stay running and track crew tech is not going to be happy about that. And I mean, that, that is actually a dangerous situation. So, uh, make sure you have your stuff wired. Um, at least similar to this. Doesn't have to be exactly this, but make sure your alternator's on the battery side of the disconnect and, and preferably have some, have some uh, fuses for you know, anything that has a battery cable hooked to it. So um, go ahead and like this video. Give us a subscribe to see more race car related wiring videos. And uh, thank you for watching.